two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bum da do 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Are we going to do a show? I think we should do a show. <laughs> Welcome to it, guys. Let's um, let's go and see if we guys see a little video interrupted thing going here. We're going to get started here in just one second, guys. We want to make sure that we're cool. We are cool. It is a glorious, uh, glorious Friday evening here on this uh, wonderful, wonderful network. So... Once again, welcome to the Rob Carson Show. Let's get this thing going. All right, welcome to the Rob Carson Show. It's the Rob Carson Show. Are you ready to be pod smacked? Now, here's Rob Carson. Hello, how are you guys doing? Uh, welcome. It's Friday. It's the third of all you. That's uh, French for August 2018. Hope you're having a uh, wonderful evening. Just hanging out with my family here, chilling like a villain on penicillin in uh, in lovely Overland Park, Kansas. Hi. Been a long day for me. I've been in class actually all day today. And uh, oh, what look at do. We got Sean from uh, Freeland, Washington. Thanks for joining me, Sean. Appreciate it, man. Or it could be woman. Don't even know. Sean's one of those names like Kelly. My wife's name's Kelly. Rebel Hoffmeyer. Hi. Yeah, it is Friday, Rebel. It is Friday. Welcome to Friday. And you're here, and, you, and you've joined me. And Vicky and Marty and all you guys, thanks for joining me today. Let's hang out, because you know what? Here's the deal. Look at me. I promise you I'm going to give you an entertaining show tonight. I've been busting my butt all day, cutting video, and then I got some comments I want to make about a lot of the uh, the day's events. So we're going to get into it. All right, shall we? As much as the uh, left in this country hates to admit it, the economy's kicking ass. The Trump economy is kicking ass. Barack Obama was in office for eight years. 1% annual GDP growth. Lousy. Bad. Last week, we found that the uh, second quarter GDP was 4.1%. I don't want to talk about minutia and all this because I'm not, I'm not an economics expert, but I know when we're kicking ass, and we are kicking ass. Speaking of kicking ass, want to hear something cool? To make my, to save my marriage, I found a job outside of broadcasting. I, if you don't know me, let me just tell you. I'm a talk show host. I've worked in Minneapolis and Cincinnati and Washington, D.C., and I've written for Rush Limbaugh. Haven't written for Rush in a few years, but I wrote for Rush Limbaugh over 20 years. And finally, after a year and a half of unemployment, my wife said, I'm going to leave you. And I said, oh, God. I said, what do you want me to do? She says, get a job. I said, well, you know what? There are no radio jobs. What do you want me to do? She says, you know what? Go sell freaking cars so two months ago i began an odyssey and i started selling toyotas at hendrick toyota in Merriam, kansas near kansas city yesterday i got the first report from my first month selling cars guess what i sold the i was the number two seller as far as a number of cars i sold 20 damn cars which is twice as many as most of the people there a little bit shy of the main guy who was 24. But you know what? I, l I won on gross, meaning I made more money for the dealership than anybody in the entire dealership first month. Do you know why? Do you know why I did that? And I just want to talk real quick here, guys. When I was interviewing for a job as a car dealer outside of broadcasting, and I've been in broadcasting for 30 freaking years. And I'm not even an old guy. I'm like 52 years old. 
I had only done radio. And I decided to audition or, or audition or try to do car sales. And I sold them on the fact that I could communicate. And they asked me what were my goals. And I said, I don't want to be a car salesman. And they said, what? I said, I don't want to be your best car salesman. I want to blow you away. At the beginning of last month, they asked me, because I had sold 12 in my first month, I said, I want to sell 15. <laughs> Gasp from the room. 15 cars. I mean, the guy just started you know, two weeks ago. What the heck? Really? And I got 20. And this month, I'm going to do 25. And there's going to be an audible gasp from the room because nobody gets 25. I'm going to get 25. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. Because my wife said, I need you to do this. I need you to support our family. She did it without saying it. And I said, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. So the economy's roaring. It's helping me. Guys, if, if you're struggling, I'm, I'm, look at me right now. If you're struggling, think outside the box. Don't let pride affect you. Don't, don't think, I can't do that. I remember, what was it, Kurt? I'm trying to remember his name. He was a quarterback for, uh, took St. Uh, Kurt. Oh, help me out here. Warren, Warren, whatever. Anyway, uh, he played quarterback for St. Louis when he took the St. Louis Rams to the Super Bowl. Kurt, help me out here, guys. Help me out. You know what you're talking about. Kurt Warren. Anyway, I met the guy. I met the guy. You know what he did before he came back to the NFL and he won the effing Super Bowl? Do you know what he did? Tell me what he did. He went and played football for a Canadian league for a while, and then he was out of the game. And you know what he did? He freaking sacked groceries. He sacked groceries. He worked like, like Morgan Freeman. In Shawshank Redemption, he bagged groceries. And then he went back to the NFL and he won the damned Super Bowl. If you're struggling in your life, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Kurt Warner, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. You rock. Leslie, thank you. I met him, Kurt Warner. Guys, a few months ago, when I, I'll get into the events of the day. A few months ago, there were days I couldn't get out of bed. There were days that I, I would never harm myself, but I thought that my family would be better off if I was not around because they get a $2 million insurance policy. <clears throat> because I wasn't offering them anything. I wasn't offering them financial security. I was a depressed, out-of-work guy. And I, uh, I just thought maybe, yeah, I'm worth $2 million bucks dead. Maybe if I just went to sleep and didn't wake up, it wouldn't be so bad. That's how bad it got. That's how bad the depression got. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't have cancer. I don't have epilepsy. I don't have spina bifida. I, 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 I just was out of work. Two build beautiful children and a, and a and a wonderful wife. Before we get into the day's events, my wife was ready to leave me. She was ready to leave me. 
And I thought the greatest failure of my life would be to have my wife leave me. And I could fail a marriage because, I mean, I, I went through a father who left me and a, and a mother who was in a, another miserable marriage. And I just thought forever, I'm like, I've got to make marriage work. I've got to prove that they were wrong. And I was failing. And last week, my wife said, I'm going to give you a second chance. You're not going to get a third chance. It was the greatest gift I've ever gotten in my life. So if you're in that position and you're down, don't give up. Don't give up. Look right here. Don't give up. Okay? Let's move on to the day's events, shall we? Kind of a powerful opening monologue. We've got uh, Rebel watching and Robert and uh, Helen, hello, and Kim and Lena and Richard. Hello, Richard. How are you, my brother? Richard Thompson, you're a stud. And Deborah and Billy Joe in Central Texas. Come on, share. Look at all these people. We've got Sean in Freeland, Washington. I told you about Sean here a few minutes ago. Vicki Hall. Hello, Vicki. How are you? You guys are, God, you make my day. Now I'm going to make yours. Let's talk about the day's events. Let's, let's, <coughs> excuse me, let's talk about Jim Acosta. Jim Acosta is a uh, White House reporter for CNN, and he's a, um, he's a tool. He's a political tool. He's a nobody. He was nothing. And he started asking outrageous questions of the, uh, of the Trump administration. He started essentially being a, uh, um, a politico and trying to uh, stir shit up so he could be noticed. Pardon the language. Jim Acosta the other day was at a uh, Trump rally. I believe this was in uh, South Carolina. This one actually I think was in Florida. And Jim Acosta, for a variety of reasons, was uh, was accosted. Because I, I called Jim, Jim Acosta. What he does is he goes after uh, the Trump administration. He asks superfluous questions to get noticed. He, he asks like, Aren't you ashamed that you are separating children from their families at the border, which is a non-realistic question that is false and is more editorial than anything? That's what Jim Acosta does. And the Trump administration, Trump administration Donald Trump is saying, you know what, bull crap. Donald Trump is saying fake news. And, and you know, it's, it's so authoritarian of him. No, not really. Not when the press in the United States abuses the privilege of the First Amendment to promote a political agenda. And that's what's happening with CFNN. That's what's happening with MSNBC, New York Times, ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS. They are promoting a political agenda above journalism and it's the greatest it's one of the greatest tragedies you can imagine because we have all been afforded the right of free speech by the first amendment and they've abused it they've abused it to be propagandists and Jim Acosta is one of those people and he's abused the privilege and it's time for his ass to be called out here he is at a Florida rally with Donald Trump being called out for what he is, a tool. President Trump will be here later on tonight campaigning uh, for the man who wants to be the governor of South Carolina for another four years. That Mm, is Henry McMaster. And as you can hear behind me, Wolf, the crowd is very fired up. We have about a couple thousand people in this room so far. Uh, They are uh, letting the press corps here know exactly how they feel about what we're doing here, Wolf. Yeah, he should be, actually. Now, let me just go ahead and say that Trump supporters have been heckled, have been assaulted. When Donald Trump was running for president, people would, uh, paid people, paid tools, would stand in line at Trump rallies and cause fights. Trump supporters have been uh, harangued, violently confronted, had their hats taken away, ice thrown in their face at a, at a restaurant, have, have had a nearly run down. Are you kidding me? Bernie Sanders supporter gunned down and attempted to gun down a bunch of Republicans at a, uh, a baseball practice last year. Here's a little bit more from this story. I can't hear you anymore. Maybe you wouldn't be heckled if you weren't a liar. 
Maybe you wouldn't be heckled if you told the truth. Maybe it would be heckled if you were a journalist, a nonpartisan journalist. But you're not, Jim Acosta. What's that? I will. Tell the truth, you Jim. Oh, my God. He said, tell the truth, Jim. Oh, my God. He's a Nazi. I will. I'm staying right here. <laughs> I'm staying right here. I'm staying right here. <laughs> hey, can I do a with you? Part of history. Sure, why not? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Oh my God, a Trump supporter actually speaking reason. Not like the Antifa. Not like Occupy. Wow, a Trump supporter actually speaking reason. I believe you have the right to be here just like anybody else. Oh my God, where's the story on that? I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh my God. Moment, though, I have to tell you, Don, where a man came up to me and said, listen, there's an elderly woman here that needs a chair. Can anybody give her a chair? Yeah. I got up from the table. I gave her my chair so she could sit you're down. You're a magnanimous person. Like you're a tool, but you're a magnanimous person. And people were saying, hey, thanks for doing that. And we sort of got into a, a conversation. Oh. I did along with a, uh, what? some of the other people there in the crowd. And, you know, we did have a civil exchange. How is that possible? Trump supporters are Nazis. So I, I do think it's possible for us to have a civility in this society, Don, but we really, we all have to. Why don't you begin by being civil at press conferences? And let's get into that, shall we? Let's get into Jim Acosta accosting that's what he does he accosts jim acosta accosting sarah sanders at the white house today question from npr she asked you about ivanka trump's statement that the press is not the enemy of the people and she asked you whether or not the press is the enemy of the people you read off a laundry list of your concerns about the press and, and things that you feel like are misreported but you did not say that the press is not the enemy of the people and i i, I think it would be a good thing if you were to say right here no no the the, the press is not the enemy of the people right now Quick question. The mainstream press in this country, who are they the enemy of? Think about it. What do you think? Helen, hello, Helen Latour. Nice to see you, girl. Ben Mason, what's up, my brother? Vicki Hall Odom, what a great name. The press of this country right now, the mainstream press, who are the enemy, they the enemy of? The truth. They're the enemy of the truth. They tailor their reports around a political agenda. They're the enemy of the truth. They may not be the you know the the enemy of the people because the people are divided. The people are divided, left, right, anti-Trump, pro-Trump, leftist, socialist, conservative. All that stuff. The mainstream press right now, they may not be the enemy of the people, but they're the enemy of the truth. Uh, at this briefing, that the press, the people who are gathered in this room right now, uh, doing their jobs every day, asking questions of officials like the ones you brought forward earlier, are not the enemy of the people. I, I, I think we... We deserve that. I think the president has made his position known. I also think... They're trying to compare Trump to Stalin. They're trying to uh, uh, they're trying to compare Trump to Mussolini, and it's not going to work. It's ironic. I'm, I'm trying Sarah, to answer you know, your question. Okay, well, I, I okay. politely wait. And they wouldn't be in this position had they not abused the First Amendment. <sighs> had they not been the check and balance of government on both sides of the political equation. I'm doing the fist thing. That's not good. I'm you know. If they'd been the check and balance on both sides of the political equation, then they would have credibility, but they don't have credibility because they've chosen sides. More from Jim Acosta, accosting Sarah Sanders. I did, and I even called on you despite the fact that you interrupted me while calling on your colleague. Well, I said it's ironic. Which is why I interrupted. I'm trying. But if you, if you finish, if you would not mind letting me have a follow-up, that would be fine. But it's ironic. 
Thank him, you. Uh, that not only you and the media attack the president for his rhetoric. Thank you. Uh, when they frequently lower the level of conversation in this country. Repeatedly, repeatedly, the media resorts to personal attacks Thank without you. any content other than to incite anger. Uh, the media has attacked me personally on a number of occasions. And you'll recall she also was attacked at a uh, restaurant in Virginia. Ironic. Jim, uh, that not only you and the media attack the president for his rhetoric uh, when they frequently lower the level of conversation in this country. Repeatedly, repeatedly, the media resorts to personal attacks without any content other than to incite anger. Uh, The media has attacked me personally on a number of occasions, including your own network, said I should be harassed as a life sentence, Thank you. that I should be choked. ICE officials are not welcomed in their place of worship and personal information is shared on the Internet. When I was hosted by the Correspondents Association, of which almost all yes. of you are members of, you brought a comedian up to attack my appearance and call me a traitor to my own. This gender. is fantastic. Gender. In fact, as I know, um, I'm as far as I know, I'm the first press. I love to- this that she's fighting carrying the history of the United States that's required Secret Service protection. The media continues to ratchet up the verbal assault against the president and everyone in this administration. And certainly we have a role to play, but the media has a role to play for the discourse in this country as well. And and sir, if you don't mind, if I I may follow up, if I may follow up, excuse me. Please do. Jim, you you always do. Not say. Did you call him a Nazi? Remarks that you just made that the press is not the enemy of the people. Are we to take it from what you just what said? What is it? What what's the question that he's asking? What what other than getting Jim Acosta noticed, what is the question that he's asking? Why is he asking that question other than just to be noticed, to make more money, and become a rock star on the left? We all get put through the ringer, we all get put in the meat grinder in this town. And you're no exception. And I'm sorry that that happened to you. Please. I wish that, that that had not happened. Give me a break. But you don't put people who are like-minded through the meat grinder, you douche. For, for the sake of this this room, the people who are in this room, this democracy, this country. This democracy. The people- for the sake of the democracy. Dear God in heaven, get off your pedestal, you moron. People around the world are watching what you're saying, sir. Are they really? The White House for the United States Are they America, really? The President of the United States should not refer to us as the enemy of the people. His own daughter acknowledges that, and all I'm asking you to do, sir, is to acknowledge that right And all I'm asking the media to do is notice me, Jim Acosta, because that's why I'm asking the question. Unbelievable. I got a couple bites from uh, CNN about um, the rally. It's amazing. Barack Obama in 2007 before 2008, when he became the candidate, when he accepted the candidacy of president, he uh, he did it at an outdoor venue in Colorado. And, and they put up these Doric columns and these flags that looked very much like Hitler at Nuremberg. And it really did. And there were people collapsing. They were fainting the thought of Barack Obama, and there was no thought about it. And yet, when there's fervent support for Donald Trump, they're all Nazis. They're all Nazis. I thought it was kind of funny. Listen to this. Listen to this. (laughs) Donnie Deutsch, who's, I don't even know who this douchebag is. But it's kind of funny that uh, on on MSNBC, they they invite people on to talk about um, Donald Trump and how he's very similar to Nazis. And they bring on a guy named Max Boot and Donnie Deutsch. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, could, could could there be names that are more, I don't know, associated with uh, 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 wartime Germany, Max Boot and Donny Deutsch? <laughs> yeah, am I right? They bring on Max Boot and Donny Deutsch, which means father in German. <laughs> I mean, honestly, really? <laughs> Max Boot and Donny Deutsch are going to talk about. They are going to talk about how Donald Trump is a Nazi. What are you talking about, Max Boot and Donny Deutsch? Oh my God! I mean, isn't this just hilarious? The Donny Deutsch, Deutschland, Deutschland, Donny Deutsch of Deutschland. The other day said that uh, that Trump supporters, because they're supportive of a, of a border, a border in the, the southern states. He called he called Trump supporters Nazi prison guards. 
Donnie Deutsch. <laughs> really, right? What? What? I am just. I'm just using Max Boot and Donny Deutsch. Are going to? They're going to not defend. You know, they're going to call Donald Trump a Nazi. I'm selling like. Uh, I'm selling like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Das Boot. It, great, great. By the way, great movie, Alan. Appreciate it. Hello, Kim. No, Obama's not the Antichrist. I'm not going to go there. Robert and and Scott. Thank you, my brother. Share, please. You know what I like to do? I'd like to get 50,000 views tonight. Let's do this. Because I got a lot more coming up. So Donnie Deutsch, the most frightening thing to me of the Trump rallies are the people. Here's Donnie Deutsch, who called Trump supporters Nazi prison guards because they supported the border. Here is Donnie Deutsch, as in Deutschland. <laughs> saying the most frightening thing, and this is about the Trump rally where they harangued, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Jim uh, Acosta, Acosted. Here he is talking about how uh, he's terrified of Trump supporters because of that. Let me grab it here. Hold on. One Trouble second. if he goes in There we go. Donnie. The, the saddest and most frightening thing to me really, when Trump is at these rallies is yeah. actually not Trump himself. Yes, it's, it, it's the people. You know, I, there was an inter- amazing statistic. Well, people are excited. To- There's a word. No, I'm not going to go there. Meet the president of the United well, States. Well, it's do you work for Richard? It's just, it, yes, excited is a nice word, but the rigor with which I'm they excited. accept his information. No, wait, 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 wait. Barack Obama had rallies where people passed out. Barack Obama had a a symbol, an O. Okay, now there's another symbol when you hold your hand up to support a leader that you you have unending support for, that that you are whipped into a fever over this person, and you and you raise your hand in a salute. Oh, Obama. The crowd, oh, the Doric columns, the flags, the marching band. Really? You want to go there, Donnie Dork? Was it yeah. CBS? Yeah, I called him Donnie Dork. Had an amazing poll that was stunning. That of people who define themselves as strong Trump supporters. Ninety percent. I'm people- a strong uh, Trump supporter, and I'm not a an effing Nazi, and I'm not a racist. You douche. But who get- Deutsch. Say their information they get from Trump they believe is accurate. Right. Where 60% they get from their friends or family they believe is accurate. Mm-hmm. And 10% from the media. Let's think about it again. Those people in that audience, because we're going to have to describe them as strong Trump supporters. If their friend or family member told them something, they're less likely to believe it mm-hmm. <clears throat> than that goofball. This guy's such an arrogant ass. He's an elitist and a douche. All up there. And crazy Uncle Donnie. And going back to the two governments that David brought up, we now have, we have crazy Uncle Donnie. There's right. the government that exists. And we now have this figure that we continue to have completely unaccountable to even his. Well, he's got the GDP to 4.1% and unemployment to 39 And Korea's dismantling uh, nuclear facilities. And uh, uh Iran's coming to the table with their bad nuclear deal. I don't know, really. ISIS has been destroyed. Man, crazy old Donald Trump. Own staff. Yeah. You're the crazy Donnie, you douche. And there's no repercussion. So we will talk this day today and say Dan Coates and Chris Ray and, and John Bolton came out and said this is a fact. It was a fact and is a fact. I'm done with this douche. I'm done with him. I'm done with Donnie Deutsch. There's nothing frightening about Trump supporters. They're just tired of being bitch slapped by the left. They're tired of being uh, 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 pigeonholed. They're they're tired of being told they're racist. Donnie Deutsch, we're tired of it, man. We are educated people. At Barack Obama rallies, it, it was different. It was it was about some sort of savior. It was it was a it was a philosophy, a governmental philosophy based on one word, which was hope, which is meaningless. I mean, I hope to make more money next year. I, I hope that maybe uh, I'm going to get a great um, a delivery when I order Chinese tonight. Meaningless. Donald Trump promised economic growth, promised unleashing the American people, lowering taxes, lowering regulations, and it's working. How does that compare to hope? How does that compare to hope? Hope, hope and change. Dear Lord in heaven.
Max Boot. <laughs> Donnie Deutsch and Max Boot. I love this. Donnie Deutsch and Max Boot on, uh, on MSNBC. Here is Max Boot talking about the, uh, the Trump rally where people were shouting down Jim Acosta. Comparing it to the, uh, well, a 1930s uh, Adolf Hitler rally, which is absurd. Well, I think Asha really nailed it when she talked about how this is really uh, serving Putin's interests. Because as Dan Coates said, there is a pervasive messaging campaign designed to divide and weaken Americans. And guess what? Donald Trump is the most important player in that pervasive campaign, whether conscious... No, wait, 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 wait. Barack Obama was the most polarizing president in the history of of the country Barack Obama and this was purposeful folks divide us on racial and economic and sexual lines Donald Trump is not dividing anybody just because you disagree with him on something doesn't mean he's dividing us Barack Obama did it purposely purposely read Saul Alinsky read Saul Alinsky. Divide the people on these lines and create chaos, and that's what's happened. And it's not Donald Trump's fault. It happened two years ago, and it happened for eight years. Or unconsciously, that is exactly what he is doing. He is dividing Americans, and he is weak. You are so full of crap. He's not dividing people. He, the, you have Trump haters over here who are dividing themselves from the rest of the country, and they're calling Trump supporters racist and Nazis and all of this stuff, and they're the ones who are dividing. We're thrilled. Trump supporters, we're thrilled. The economy's roaring back. We're stronger on the world stage. We're giving China and, and Russia what for? We're not dividing anybody. The division is between those who hate the fact that Donald Trump is succeeding and those who are thrilled with the fact that he's succeeding. That's the division. It's not about race. Black unemployment at an all-time low. Hispanic unemployment, all-time low. It's not about division created by Donald Trump. It's about division created during the Obama administration and the support of that division by the mainstream media our institutions he is attacking every pillar of our society oh, shut up you moron i can stand as a check whoa, 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 really really how about the pillar of marriage how about the pillar of family really how about the pillar of uh, i don't know letting a human being survive the womb where have those been attacked where have those been under attack and balance upon his misbehavior starting of course with the shut press up. and that very ugly display that uh jim acosta was subject to at that, at that subject time. to Jim Acosta has subjected the president and the press secretary to more uh, uh, unjust questioning and and political haranguing than anybody. Trump rally, with, which seemed like something out of some kind of authoritarian regime from the 1930s. Oh, wait, wait, what, what authoritarian regime from the 1930s would that be? Would that be what? Was it a French French person? Was it hmm, Canadian? No, I think he's comparing us to Nazis, which happens all the time. Not just that, it's also the fact that Trump, for example, on a daily basis, yes. attacks the integrity of the Department of Justice, attacks the integrity... Well, because the, the DOJ and the FBI went after him and his campaign and used a dossier paid for by the Hillary Clinton campaign, Barack Obama's Organizing for America and the DNC, to surveil the Trump campaign, the Trump presidency. So I guess there's, you know, I could see maybe there'd be a little... Mm, problem with that of the fbi and the official i mean keep in mind brooke the official white house designation for the robert s Mueller special counsel investigation yes. a, a lawful duly appointed investigation yes uh, yeah yeah a politically uh uh tooled investigation please thank you very much go set up by the department of by the way which avoided hillary clinton and her server and her uh clinton foundation getting 150 million dollars from russia all that stuff it's, it's rigged witch hunt right it's not just trump sarah sanders says it john Bolton. the rigged witch hunt is against the trump candidacy transition team and presidency so that they all call it a rigged witch hunt i mean that is scam it's max boot max boot talking to us <laughs> max boot max boot and Dami, donnie deutsch are going to be calling the the trump administration nazis max boot and Dami, donnie deutsch do you not see the irony i did maybe i'm maybe i'm uh, maybe you don't no i think you get it because you're smart people vilma valencia
Paciente. What a marvelous name. Scott Dorn, Alan Welton, Vilma. That's a fantastic. Billy Joe Blackwood. How you doing there? Helen Latore. Robert Bertram. Jeff Allen. Jeff Allen. How you doing there, Jeff? Leslie Ingle Prater. Ben Mason. My God, we're getting some views tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, real quick, real quick, if you don't mind. You'll notice this up here. This is one of my t-shirt designs. Go to TEE Public and just look up conservatives. If you want to get a Hillary in 20 Never shirt. Oh, I added a new one. A new t-shirt today says, I don't care that you're offended. Order this. Will you help me pay the bills? Will you help me sell some great shirts? This is such a good t-shirts. You can put it on coffee mugs. You can put it on uh, uh, laptop covers. You can put it on phone cover. Hillary in 20 Never. This is gigantic. This is so damn cool. Here, let's make it bigger. It's bigger. Hillary in 20 Never. How about that? Order that shirt, will ya? Make it a favorite, tpublic.com conservatees, and just send it to other people. All right? Chuck Todd. Chuck Todd. Talking about the rally where Jim Acosta was accosted like he normally accosts other people. Here he is talking about uh, booing reporters is akin to mowing down people with cars. And this kind of unfocused, visceral anger at the other side are really neutral people like folks in the press corps. They're not neutral in the press corps, you bone. It can lead to this. Oh, yes. Okay, that's the Charlottesville rally, completely unrelated to anything associated with the press. A completely unrelated, honestly, nonsensical, nonsensical on his part. That you would compare this to Donald Trump's treatment of the press. Absolute nonsense. Bat crap crazy BS. This is a... a, a uh, a, a rally that we talked in Charlottesville that were supposedly all these ultra right people, but they were met by Antifa and all this stuff, and some bat crap crazy guy runs over somebody, whatever. Not even associated with going after the media. No media member was rolled over by this this person who is in custody. What 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 the hell are you saying, Chuck Todd? They're not even related. I'm going to give you some real examples of anti Trump. Ism, and, we, and whether it be wrecking Donald Trump's star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, or people being uh, hit by uh, cars because they were in their car and had a Trump bumper sticker on it, we saw that last week. To people being assaulted at Trump rallies, people being assaulted while Donald Trump was running for president, uh, Antifa members and leftists. Uh, Showing up before Trump rallies, getting in the line to start fights. Are you out of your gosh damn mind? This isn't even related, Chuck Todd. Look, according to today's Washington Post, President Trump has made yeah. 4,229 false or misleading oh, comments there in 558 days. Really, really? How many false and misleading uh, comments that uh, Donald Trump did? Keep your health care, keep your plan, keep your doctor. It's an average of 7.6. I don't think the media kept track of this false and misleading claims during the Obama administration, right? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. Today, this is not normal. We shouldn't be in the business of just shrugging our shoulders and normalizing. Oh, man, you are so powerful. And honestly, and I, I do commentary, uh, you really, you think you've made a powerful commentary, but you really haven't, Chuck. You have not made a powerful commentary. Uh, you you compare it to apples and oranges, and when you look at the number of violent incidents against Trump supporters, um, you're high. <laughs> Gosh, darn it. There are so many stupid people out there. And I'm not saying a genius, I'm a genius, but at least I can defend myself intellectually. Chuck Todd, I mean, are you out of your gosh darn mind? Trump supporters have been attacked time and time and time and time and time again. Here's here's some video from a, a San Jose rally last year. Uh, Trump supporters being accosted 
did not become national news. Trump supporters, as as dozens of times have happened, Trump supporters being attacked by anti-Trump leftists. Here's some footage from that. We've seen conservative speakers on campus being attacked. We've seen, where has Milo Yiannopoulos been? Where is Milo Yiannopoulos? He's gone. He's gone. He's not even on the scene anymore. The left went after him. Ben Shapiro on campus at Berkeley. Actually, it was Milo Yiannopoulos on Berkeley. They burned the damn campus. They burned buildings. They wrecked. Uh, He had to be escorted out. How many leftist speakers are being treated this way? And these people are just supporting Donald Trump. See how ugly it gets. Oh, there you go. Yet if somebody shouts down Jim Acosta at a Trump rally because he's a tool, oh, it's a, we're fearing for our lives. No, not really. Trump supporters, conservatives, Republicans, we don't we don't injure people. We're not the anti-fa. Yeah, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Just honestly, the the hypocrisy of the left is is sickening to me. Honestly, who's watching? Scott, hello, Jeff Allen. Let's see, uh, Michael. Lore says, including Antifa. Ben Mason joining us tonight. Vilma Vitilio. Fantastic name. Glad to have you joining me. The left is mowing down people. The left is injuring people. The right is not. Those who support Donald Trump are not. But we can't wear a hat in public. And you know what? Here's the deal. It's not going to play well. You you want to... I, I swear to God, I just want to wear a Donald Trump uh, Make America Great Again hat so I can defend myself. If I wear a Donald Trump hat in public and you touch me, it's going to get ugly. If you try to grab my hat, it's going to get ugly. And the left is, is limp-wristed and they are weak people. They are. They, they are weak intellectually. They are weak in, uh, physically. They're probably mostly, many of them, vegans, so they don't have a lot of uh, protein in their system, and, and, they're, and they're muscularly weak. I'm, I'm teasing. But I, I sincerely, I want to wear a MAGA hat just so you F with me so I can, I can give it back. <clears throat> CNN political analyst, and by the way, she works for a uh, network that exclusively uh, hires black people. April Ryan believes that uh, Jim Acosta's life was in danger at Donald Trump's rally. Now, you saw the rally that I just showed you, Trump supporters actually physically being attacked. Uh, Not happening at the CNN, uh, at the rally where people uh, taunted Jim Acosta. One guy actually said, hey, man, I support your right to be here. Far cry from having a bottle of urine tossed at you or being physically accosted on campus or off campus if you support Donald Trump. But CNN's April Ryan works for a, uh, literally, she works for a network that just exclusively hires black people. I don't know if you knew this, like the Urban Radio Network or something, and they only hire black people. There are no white people who are uh, hosts there. It's like Radio 1. Radio One is a national broadcast company exclusively devoted to hiring black people and putting them on the air. If you're a white guy or a white woman, maybe a white woman, if you're a white guy, don't apply. You're not going to get the job. Mika Brzezinski, who's a case, by the way. Mika Brzezinski was uh, convinced that (laughs) Donald Trump's rally in North Korea, uh, North Korea, in... (laughs) North Carolina, might have been South Carolina, convinced that Donald Trump is unhinged. Now, this is a woman who, honestly, I, I, I have you ever watched Mika Brzezinski and, and uh, Joe Scarborough? Have you ever watched them? I mean, 
the show has fewer viewers than I do during the week. Did you know that? It, it, it has so much. He has fewer viewers than I do in, during the week on my podcast. It's, it's a really badly watched network on MSNBC, and, and their show is just lousy. Here's Mika Brzezinski saying that Donald Trump, because of this rally, which, by the way, was, was, was wonderful. It was a wonderful rally. He's touting all the successes. And, and honestly, <clears throat> if Donald Trump is as crazy as Mika Brzezinski <clears throat> says, how did the smartest man to ever go to Washington, D.C., Barack Obama, manage to fail so badly? When you've got a nut guy who's descending into, into insanity uh, and the, the economy's roaring at a 4.1 pace and the, uh, and the unemployment number is at 3.9. Here's Mika Brzezinski on the insanity of Donald Trump, apparently. Yes, a lot of them vote in the primary, but there will be a wave that likes to vote. Donnie Deutsch, Deutschland. So my take is this. It's blunt, uh, fair to say. His name is Donnie Deutsch. He doesn't understand the irony of comparing uh, the Donald Trump administration to Nazi Germany. His name is Donnie Deutsch and Max Boot. But I, and I've been there before, and I did it when it wasn't cool to do, <laughs> and I'm going to do it again. He's not well. That's the bottom line. There's no way anyone who knows Donald Trump but is not bought, on, bought in in some way could watch him last night and not come away with a feeling that the president of the United States is completely unhinged. <laughs> it's just a woman. <laughs> God in heaven. You, I mean, really, if you look at... Um, Mika Brzezinski, do you look at somebody who is, I mean, she's driven completely by ego. Have you met TV personalities lately? Have you met TV? I mean, you think radio people are nuts? TV people are batshit bipolar nutcases. I mean, honestly, honestly, they, they live and die by research. They live and die by people thinking they're ugly or they're pretty. And, and this, 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 this woman who, I mean, honestly, has the dumb as a box of rocks without the rocks. Let me just put it that way. Who can barely put together a cogent thought, but the reason why she has a job is because she's hot and now she's hooked up with Joe Scarborough. Honestly, that that she would psychoanalyze someone is, is just laughable. And getting worse by the day. Perhaps the stress <laughs> is really... Then why is he succeeding? I mean, why why is the economy kicking ass? Why is unemployment kicking ass? Why are we kicking Russia's ass? Why are we kicking North Korea's ass? Why are we kicking China's ass? Because he's insane. Pleasing in on him. You're right. I mean, honestly, if you look at the, uh, Donald Trump's success is making the country better. Your success would be getting ratings. And I think your ratings pretty much um, suck balls. It's Didn't want to bring Scarborough in there, but you know. Interesting that a former reality <laughs> TV star and colleague of Trump yeah. is releasing a book with the title. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What's her name? Unhinged. And this is a woman who knew him during his reality show days very well and then went with him to the White House. And in it, she describes a reaction to a man that she had known for over a decade. Amorosa. Now, Amorosa has done nothing in her life. She got on The Apprentice. She has done nothing in her life. <clears throat> she was a reality show contestant, and that's it. She was briefly in the Trump White House. Trump said, get the F out of here. What has Amorosa done other than being an Apprentice candidate, getting in the White House for a brief time before she was fired, and then writing a book? That's it. That's all she's but because she's an enemy of the president, she's going to be celebrated. Who is in a state of mental decline. She's actually, it, it, makes, it makes even less sense than Mika Brzezinski saying that the president is in mental decline when she clearly is. It's a concern that we've voiced on this show during the campaign. Doesn't matter what you voice, you moron, you're not a psychoanalyst. You're just a psycho. And over the last tumultuous God 18 him. months, try and find someone who's not politically invested or too fearful of Donald Trump oh, God, or the Republican woman. Party who knew the man up your meds and a decade ago who will tell you that his mental state has not deteriorated. No, I, I think pretty much. I don't think that more people say that than 
say he's doing a great job. It radically over the past few years or changed <laughs> or come out in some way. It is transforming what we're watching. You will not find that person from yeah. Donald Trump's past. Yeah. If they're telling you the truth. Yeah. We were told of his. God, this is just goodbye. I'm, you know, I'm done with you. You are such a. Honestly, <clears throat> Mika Brzezinski is a mental midget. All right. I, I'm a pretty smart guy. And I'm just going to say she's a mental midget. How the F she got the job, how she how the F she's getting the money. Well, because her father was Zvignev Brzezinski. Who worked in the Carter administration. That's why she's got the job. That's why she's got the job. She's an idiot. She's an idiot. And how dare you? Being this prima donna TV personality with fake boobs and and makeup every day and all this, you're gonna you're gonna psychoanalyze the president? Are you out of your mind, woman? I know you TV personalities. You're fragile people. You're fragile, fragile, breakable people. Who, who live and die by reviews, who live and die by Twitter posts, and you're going to criticize the president? Just, it's funny. It's just funny. Jeez Louise. A man hailing from Erie County, New York, was arrested after allegedly leaving uh, House Majority Whip Steve Scalise, who was shot by a uh, Bernie Sanders supporter about a year and a half ago left a message insinuating harm against his children in retaliation for President Donald Trump's border enforcement policies. But, you know, we have to worry about Trump supporters, right? <clears throat> we have to worry about Trump supporters at a rally for Trump calling Jim Acosta out for lying. Here's the message. 63-year-old Carlos Bayon of Grand Island, New York, stands accused of issuing an interstate threat. He said, hey, listen, this message is for you and the people that sent you there. So to Steve Calise, you are taking ours, we are taking yours, anytime, anywhere. We know where you are. We are not going to feed them sandwiches. We are going to feed them lead. Make no mistake, you will pay. Oyo por oyo, diente por diente. That's eye for an eye, tooth for a teeth. This is our law, and we are the majority. Have a good day. Well, Steve, it's nice that he said, you know, I'm going to kill you, but have a good day. <clears throat> I'm going to kill you, but hey, hey. Have a good day. <laughs> you know, an eye for an eye. We're gonna, I'm going to kill you, but uh, have a great day. This is the bad ship craziness of the left in this country. I want to mention something real quick here. They are not officially sponsors of my show, but they are incredible. That's pretzels. If you live in the Midwest, if you live in Kansas, if you live in Missouri, if you live in middle of Iowa, right up the right up the Missouri River to South Dakota and North Dakota. <clears throat> These pretzels are the best effing pretzels you've ever had in your life. And I'm going to tell you, when my wife, who sells them at her work, which is an ace hardware, she does a part-time job there, she will bring home dots, home-style pretzels. And I got to tell you, they are the best. Guys, when I started talking about them in January, they said, stop talking about us, Rob, because we can't keep up with the orders. You, 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 yeah, I, as a foodie... These are, when my wife brings them home, we go nuts. They're that good. And I'm not over-exaggerating. They are that good. If you go to DotsPretzels.com, I want you to order a bunch of bags of them. Order a bunch. Order the big bags, the small bags, the, the snack size bags. You're going to go crazy. They're garlicky. They're oniony. They're so, they're so good. DotsPretzels.com, I'm telling you, they are amazing. Amazing. We're winding things down here. Uh, U.S. candidate from Oregon slammed for his offensive, uh, offensive remarks about Melania Trump, calling her a hoe bag. Implied she was a prostitute. This is the left. Mark Roberts, an independent running for Congress in Oregon's 2nd Congressional District, made the comments about Mrs. Trump on Twitter on Monday. Did you know the First Lady works by the hour, is what he said. He went back and forth with several credits before doubling down on his previous comments, saying the First Lady, you start whipping out hundreds and see how cl hashtag classy she gets. Hashtag make it rain. What a dick. You know, honestly, really unbelievable. 
two more kind of lighter stories here. All right. So there's a kid, apparently uh, in New York, who tried to open a lemonade stand. And, of course, the health department shut him down. Here's the story and then how Country Time Lemonade, which is made without lemons, uh, responded to the controversy. Check it out. Tear it up and voila, you got lemonade. At just seven years old, Brendan Mulvaney makes a mean lemonade and at a bargain, too. He's been selling the summer staple at his stand on his parents' porch for the last few years. But this weekend, his father says Brendan's stand was shut down by the state. Nothing he did was wrong. A spokesman for the New York State Department of Health says an inspector stopped at the stand after receiving complaints from vendors at the Saratoga County Fair across the street. The spokesman <laughs> claims the stand looked too structured and much greater than the average yes. little kid's spontaneous lemonade stand. Yes, yes, yes. The Mulvaney's were told by law they need to pay for a permit for the second grader to operate his stand. It's a lemonade There's stand. There's more important things in life than, uh, you know, shutting down a kid's lemonade stand. It boggles the mind. Senator Jim Tedisco is calling the state's response a complete <sighs> overreach that lacks common sense. Today, no. Tedisco announced that he is... Can we just honestly... If you're going to teach kids entrepreneurship and hustle. I mean, I used to sell like sweet corn roadside. I didn't need a stand. I'd sit on a lawn chair by a wheelchair or by a wheelchair, by a, a, a wheelbarrow and try to sell sweet corn. I sold greeting cards. I sold all sorts of stuff because I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And unfortunately, the government doesn't support entrepreneurship and god dang it let a kid sell effing lemonade Jesus. legislation called the lemonade law Thank to you. help keep child run lemonade stands open for business in Stupid. new york state we're spending time finding the real criminals now they're <laughs> seven year olds out in their front yard <laughs> selling lemonade those are not the criminals in new york state now, these are families who are trying to teach their kids some important uh lessons yeah and it makes sense Teach a kid to be an entrepreneur, sell some lemonade without the government being involved. Here's the genius move by Country Time Lemonade. And I don't know what company owns Country Time. But they decided they're going to pay the legal bills of people who are confronted of children. This is this. This is where we are. Okay? It's come to this. Country Time has to defend children with lemonade. This is a genius marketing move. Last story of the night. Around the country, kids are getting busted for running lemonade stands. It's hilarious. Entrepreneurship. Good work habits. <laughs> good old-fashioned fun. Thank you. Shut down because of old, arcane, but very real laws to kids like Autumn Thomason. My lemonade stand got shut down because I didn't have a permit. It was unfair. <laughs> it's happening everywhere. It is. Seriously, look it up. But this summer, things are going to be different because Country Time is introducing Fantastic. Legal Aid, a crack team <laughs> ready to straighten out lemonade stand related permits and fines, <laughs> making sure no kid is denied their right to a lemonade stand <laughs> and all the benefits they bestow. If you have a problem with your lemonade stand, <laughs> the offices of Country Time Legal Aid are ready to oh. take a stand for you. Tastes like justice. So, when life gives you arcane laws, make, make lemonade. lemonade. We're here for you. This is... Get your permits and fines paid at CountryTimeLegalAid.com. That is genius. Genius from Country Time. Wow. 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 Bravo. Even though your lemonade is not made with lemons. <laughs> hey, guys, I got to go. Uh, I want to thank you for joining. Just a great response tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wherever you are. Thank you for joining me. I might be joining a radio station very soon. We'll see what happens. I'll give you the details on it. In the meantime, it's been the world to me that you're here with me. So does Scott and Jeff and, and all of you guys. My God, that, look at the numbers tonight. And Dan and Ben and, and where are the women? My God, there's so many women. Uh, it's all dudes now. Uh, Vilma and Helen and all of you guys. It means the world to me that you would join me on this show. All right? So... God bless you. Thank you for the love. All right. And I should be back on Tuesday. Okay. On Tuesday. That's my day off from selling cars. In the meantime, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. God bless you. And have a glorious all right. night.
Thanks so, for listening to the you. Rob Thank Carson love, Show. Right? Friend him on Facebook at Carson Show, on Twitter at Rob Carson, and on Instagram. Uh, I think Facebook and Twitter are enough for now.